Hey there, Internets. Nelson here. And recently, Pablo Stanley asked me if I could help with this Doodle Idea Generator. So he tweeted out that he needed some help with uh, a Webflow project that can do a force random, shuffle variables, randomize everything, and have text blocks that don't break and read as one sentence. So each word would break depending on your uh, uh, browser width, right? So he tagged me and Waldo in there, and uh, I spoke up and said, yeah, sure. It was 8 o'clock at night, and I was just surfing, and I was like, oh, okay, yeah, I'll do it. So I ran upstairs, and it's like, ooh, new puzzle. Let's go. And so here's the final uh, version of the project. And so you can refresh the page as much as you want, and you get a new idea generated. You can even click on each of the... There it goes. Click on each of the uh, text to change it to something else random. And yeah, there you go. So an evil raccoon with three eyes eating a taco in space with just the outlines. Okay, I'm not an illustrator, but if you want to try that, go for it. But in this tutorial, I'll show you how I was able to achieve this with some code. Here we go. Uh, here is the project that Pablo gave me, and um, in it, there's these collections that have adjectives, subjects, characteristics, actions, scenes, and styles. So he already had that data all out there. And then he tried adding them all on the same line using a collection list wrapper and then adding a space next to each one. He added a custom code just for that non-breaking space code. And let me close that. Save and close. There it goes. And then uh, same thing with all the other ones. He just rinse and repeated, just copy paste all of these. But the problem with this is he was trying to do randomizing by using random shuffle. Now, this random and shuffle order inside of Webflow collection lists is not true random. It's randomized when you publish the site. And so you can't just press publish every second of the day. Uh, so this isn't real random. It's just random right when you publish it. And then that's it. Uh, to achieve true random, you need to use JavaScript or jQuery. And that's what I did in the final version. All right. So this is why this setup doesn't work. All right. So he was wondering how come random doesn't really work. It's because it only random randomizes it once. All right. So here is how I, here's the finished product. You don't really see it, but, uh, this is the finished product. This is the one that works. And I will show you how I solve this problem. All right. So let's go to my tutorial page. And so what I did is actually, let me just copy and paste. All right. I'm going to copy this data right here and I'm going to show you what's inside of it. So what I did was let me show off the data. Let me remove display none. All right. So what I did was I added, I put all the collectionless wrappers inside of a div called data. And inside of there, all I did was just let the data show up. Just let all the text show up. And um, yeah, so I, I bound it to whatever the collection is and then the name, because that's the only thing I need to bind, right? So you have your adjectives, you have your subjects, Characteristics. So this goes on and on and on. All right. These are all the data that's coming from collections. So I just put them there and I put a text and then that's it. All right. Well, did I do anything else with this? Ah, okay. Yeah. So well, also for each of these, I gave it a class name of data one. This will be important later because like, yeah, so this will be important later. So this is data one. And then for these pieces of text, this is data two and so on. So this one has a class name of data three. This one would be four. Oh, that's three, four. And all of these would be data 
five and six. Okay. So that's how I uh, put them. So I put a collection list wrapper and then I would give it a class name of data one through six. And then I bind that to the name field in the collection. All right. So after I did that, I went to data and I display none because I don't need to see it. It's still on the page. It's still going to render the code. It's just that CSS is hiding it. All right. So that's what display block does. And now what else did I do? Let me go back to my finish one. Ah, yes. Okay. So then let's see here. Okay, cool. So then I just put, let me just copy that whole thing. So then I just put a bunch of divs right next to each other. And these divs is what's going to hold the actual text. All right. So right here, I gave it a, a class name of copy and then gave it a combo class of whatever color it's going to be on hover. Okay. So if it's copy and it's yellow, let me show you yellow. That's his greenish yellow that, that when you hover. All right. So that's why there's a combo class. All right. But we, because it's just a div, we don't really have to put a text in there because the text is going to be random. So imagine, imagine you have a box. All right. And then off in the distance, uh, somewhere hidden, like say, like a magician, right? He behind the curtain, you're going to grab something random and then you're going to place it in the box really quick and say, aha, here you go. So that's what's happening on click. You're like reaching out for that hidden box and then putting it in the box that's on stage and saying, here you go. So that's that's what's happening here. And so we have one, two, three. Yeah, we have six boxes. And this is what I mean by the the data dash one dash two dash three so that's what we're doing we're for this one right here this is box one we're if we click on this we're looking for box one and then we're putting data in it and saying here you go same thing with data two three four five and six so this is this the visible boxes but in the background right here is the actual uh hidden boxes okay now with this copy, I also gave it an ID, copy one, okay? And this one's copy two, three, four, five, and six. So again, these boxes that are on stage, we give them a name. So we say, hey, box number one, place it in box number one on stage, and then show it to the audience. Now we're gonna take from box number two and so on, okay? So that's how we did that. And now, we just need to make that transition, the, the grabbing of the data and then putting it in the box and showing people we need to make that happen. And that's where code comes in. All right. Maybe one day this will be doable. Maybe one day this will be doable um, without code. But for now, you need code. All right. For those of you who don't code, this may look like gibberish, but I'll try to go line by line to explain as best I can. All right. So here we go. Script. You're just telling, you're just telling the browser, Hey, I have some JavaScript and the browser's like, okay, cool. So line three, I'm starting a loop. So this is how you do a loop where it's like, okay, we're going to start here and then we're going to do this a couple of times. Okay. So right now I have a variable. That's what var means variable. And I named it I. Okay. And I say I equals one. All right. So I'm telling the browser, Hey, I equals one. And then as long as I is less than or equal to six, do this loop. So this is what's telling this line three is telling the script to loop six times. So it's saying var equals one. And while we're still doing this loop for six times, while I equals and less than or equal to six, run this, run this loop. When you're done with the loop, take the letter, take the variable I and add one to it. So 
for line three, it says, okay, do this loop. So it does the loop once. And then once it's done, it says, okay, now I equals two. Is two less than or equal to six? Yes, then do it again. And then do it again until I equals six. All right, so this is what this line means. All right, so what's in this loop? So I'm telling it, hey, you know what? Find, uh, find the amount of elements, find the amount of text, the, the CMS items, Find the amount of elements that have the same class name of data dash and what whatever letter I is. So if the first loop, it's going to do data dash one. So find all the elements with that same class name. All right. So find them and count it. And so that number goes into a temporary browser memory called D. All right. And so then I tell the browser, okay, now randomize it. Give me the element, okay? Give, give me a number, uh, a random number between one and, between one and D. And D is the number of elements that have that class name, okay? So imagine if there's 10 uh, elements with that class name, so, the browser would be like, okay, a number between one and 10, pick a random one. Cool. So now we get a number and we're going to call it L. You can name it whatever you want. And so then I'm like, cool. So take data dash and then whatever number the loop we're on right now and find the text, uh, find the text element with that random number. Okay. So the random we're gonna we have a box of 10 text elements we're gonna choose a random one cool now whatever word is inside of that element with that class name save that word and we're gonna save that word into a new temporary browser memory called et again you can call these whatever you want all right almost done and so then we take the text that we have et and we put it inside of copy and then whatever number we are on I. And just to make sure I'm doing it right, console log, I'm just putting in the browser dev tools to show me the, uh, show me if I'm doing everything right. Okay. So you don't really need this part, but it's up to you. All right. So to summarize again, let's do a loop. How many times? Six times. Cool. Let's find out how much, how many uh, elements have this same class name. Now use that number and randomly choose a number between that and one. Okay. Now that you have that number, let's find that text that's in that invisible box, right? So that's line six. And then line seven is now let's take it and put it into the visible box that's on stage. Cool. And so do that six times. And so that's how we fill the six boxes that are in st on stage. All right. Um, this new idea, this is just a button I gave an ID saying when you click on this button, reload the page. That's what location reload means. So location actually means your URL bar. And then reload means reload. So that's what this button does right here. You click it, it reloads the page. That's all it's doing. And lastly, for the regular, if you, if you click on any of the text, it'll change. I had to do a thing where if you click on any of the copy, any of the boxes that are visible, do something. And that's, so that's what line 15 does. And then what that something is, is, I, um, I said, when you click on copy, find the attribute ID. Okay. And so it's going to go find the attribute, like say copy six, it's going to find this ID. And then I tell it, cool. Now that you found the ID, find the last character, find the last character. That's what slice negative one means. Find the last character in the char in the uh, ID attribute and save that to a temporary browser memory. 
All right, so it saves it as I, and I say, okay, do that thing again. Find how many have that same class name, randomize it, get the text from it, put it into the copy, and then, um, and then, uh, oh, whoops. <laughs> cool. And then, uh, yeah, do the console log just to make sure. All right. So that's it. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that's how it's happening. Again, it's just, I'm hiding the data. It's still there on the page. It's just that I'm placing it into visible boxes when on click or on refresh or on load. Uh, yeah. And if you just want to do this more simply, you can just go to uh, web to here we go webflow.com slash website slash doodle strudel random generator and you can just easily clone it thanks to pablo all right so clone that and make your own random idea generator have fun with it and hopefully you'll learn something from this tutorial so that's about it and as always make the web beautiful together see ya